So about five months ago, or six months ago, we were sitting basically right here talking. It was your first day as head coach. How do you feel differently now, um, six months later, that you've been here? Well, I feel much more up to speed and educated on the goings on, you know, around here on campus, how things are done. Uh, much more familiar with the area. We've got a house. We're settled. Um, so feel we feel acclimated. Um, we still have a long way to go, and we're amazed at how quickly that time's gone by. But much more acclimated, and, and a lot of it's because of the wonderful people here that have reached out to make us feel comfortable and welcome and, and all that. You were a Montana guy for so long. Do you feel like you're an Oregon State guy now? Do you, is it sunken in that you're the head coach at Oregon State? Uh, you know, I, I feel comfortable. We talked off mic about how this definitely feels like home. Um, you know, when we make little trips or recruiting trips, can't wait to get back to this area. Um, I've been to Missoula a few times over the summer and felt like a foreigner. I did not feel like, you know, that was home. So um, I, I feel like uh, we're, we're up to speed and, um, you know, I'm in that big group of beaver believers and we're ready to, to, get, to get after it. How's the staff been and how have they come together? They're great. Uh, I just I feel so lucky that we were able to, to put together the quality staff that we have, both as as people number one, but coaches as well. And um, we're we're going to have to feel out, I think, especially Stevie and, and Greg, um, how you know how we gel as far as during games, during practices. You know, I, I really encourage participation by everybody. Not everybody does that, but we we do. I, I feel it's important for the players to hear from the coaches. Um, they obviously are very experienced and have knowledge, so that's not gonna be an issue. Um, but we gotta feel you know, when, when we can kind of throw those things in, especially come game time. So there's some things that we're continuing to work out, but it's, it's great because their attitudes have been awesome, their energy and their work ethic. So we're, we're, we're excited and thrilled to be here. The roster is obviously um, you know, kind of bare bones. What are your expectations? You, you were talking about it a little bit up there. What, what are your realistic expectations for this team and this roster? Well, I just, I just want to implement our philosophies and, and our way of doing things this year. And that's not just how we play. You know, we're gonna, we know we can always control how hard we play and our attitudes, no matter who the opponent, no, no matter who the opponent or the level of our talent. Um, so that's what we want to do, and, and, and let's, let's get out of the gate here, playing our tails off, playing together, getting people excited, um, you know, and, and really take on that attitude that, you know, nobody's expecting much out of us, so, so let's go knock some people off, you know. Um, we're competitive, and we're not by any means thinking that this is going to be a wash. We're, we're going to lay the foundation this year, and, you know, we're going to go out and hit people in the mouth from a basketball standpoint. Um, we're going to play our tails off for 40 minutes. We're going we're gonna to take care of the ball. We're going to play unselfishly. And we're going to grind our butts off on defense and on the glass. Uh, and, and I think that's what the people want. They want to see that. And, and then they know the wins are going to come probably down the road somewhere. But if we can get this group to buy into those things, then I think we'll be able to surprise ourselves with, with maybe a couple more wins than, than maybe we'd think right now. No seniors, so theoretically everybody's coming back next year. I know you can't talk about your recruiting class next year, but the guys know who you're bringing in. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's a sense that some of these guys are playing for their spots next year, that that's part of the motivation? Um, you know, it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt if that's what was part of the motivation. Uh, but, but really, we haven't had to go there yet. Um, it's more about let's, let's, let's implement our system, our style of play. Here, here it is, we've laid it out, and, and let's see this every day. And, and that other stuff will take care of itself. But kids are smart. You know, they, they, they understand the, you know, the, the kind of class that we have committed and, and that we may even add to it. And, um, you know, that's, that's how you create discipline a little bit with, with depth. And um, we're certainly, you know, we could have easily came in here and cleaned house and said, hey, we don't know you guys. We're gonna, we're gonna send you out and we're gonna go sign a bunch of kids over the summer. That's not who we are. We wanted to give these guys a chance. Um, you know, I think they appreciate that. I think they're starting to understand. You know, the route we've gone is a very respectful one, and, and, and so they're, they're on board with us. But if that's a little extra part of their motivation, uh, then, you know, that's a good thing. Daniel Gomez and Shanjai are 
two big guys, maybe a little raw, at least from a playing perspective. You're, you're obviously a big guy yourself. I imagine you work a little bit more with them. Um, sure. What do you see potential-wise in them, and how do those two guys uh, need to develop to, to become you know, good Pac-12 players? Right. Well, they've got, a, they've got to really, you know, their confidence. They, they haven't had a ton of experience, and when they've played, especially Daniel, I don't know that they, you know, he got the ball a whole lot. So we're trying to develop those skills, make them scoring threats on the block, um, defensive presence. Uh, they need to both become tenacious uh, defenders and rebounders. Um, if they can do that and then offensively get our guys open, set screens, catch the ball, put themselves in position to score with our systems and understanding our, our sets, then I, I think it's, it's going to be big that they can sort of be those anchors in the middle for us. Um, you know, Daniel right now, we just we need him to be healthy. Um, you know, he's been banged up in years past. He's banged up over the summer. Again now, you know, um, Shea's made great progress. I think he's gone from wondering whether he really had a lot of love for the game to where he's excited. And, and so I think because of that, we've seen a lot of progress in the last month and a half. And, and I know in March, we'll see a much better player than we're seeing right now. And that's what we have to be focused on. We, we can't, as a staff, be looking for these instant results. We need to be patient as well. Gary Payton, uh, the second has been now, obviously you dealt with him a little bit. We talked about him a little bit in August or September, whenever that was, but now that you guys have had official practices and you're starting the season, uh, what, what do you expect out of him this year? What kind of player is he? And what role is he gonna have on this team? Well, we're very encouraged by, he's the one guy that's been very consistently vocal, you know, and trying to provide some leadership. And for a new guy to be doing that, it's, it's pretty, uh, you know, you don't see that very often. So offensively, I think he's a guy that is going to have to, to make some plays for us. I think he's a guy that cr can create some offense off of his defense. Um, he's long-armed, anticipates well. Um, but, but really, we need him to buy in to be one of those guys that, understands the importance of this first group helping to turn things around by laying that foundation and so far he, he's done that and you know we just the more comfortable he gets here I think the more consistent effort we'll see out of him day in and day out and that's that's going to be the big thing. Finally we, we were talking about it off camera before but the experience of the walk-on tryouts for you a uh, new one for you as a coach uh, what, what was it like going through that watching watching that tryout go down? Well, it was, it was exciting. Um, I mean, it came about because it was a necessity. You know, at the time, we'd only had, um, I think, nine scholarship players. And, you know, we got one of those guys that's up in the air, whether they're going to be able to play. Uh, but we were, we were also looking to get our students involved. And that's so important to turning around the, the atmosphere in Gill, getting, getting student involvement. So we thought, man, it'd be neat if, if we had several of these guys, you know, that came here with no idea that they were going to be on the basketball team and, you know, it might create a nice little buzz and it certainly has to this point. So um, it was fun to go through, through, through that and see the excitement from the student body. We had over 22 guys show up and there was probably 10 others that missed the deadline, you know, of, of, of getting signed up. So they showed up in, in pretty good numbers and, you know, we got some guys that are very functional for practice. and. Whether that leads to anything come game time, we'll see. And, and, and we may, that roster's ever evolving, so we may even add to it as we move forward. Scott Ruick had to do that, you know, your neighbor to the south, <laughs> yes. directly underneath you, when he first came. And he's went from that to now being picked third in the Pac-12, yeah. being an NCAA tournament team, winning an NCAA tournament game last year. Have you talked to him about his experience coming in in maybe a similar situation, having to do a walk-on trial with the student body to, to where he's at now just a few years later? Yeah, we, we, we've talked. Um, we played golf, I think, um, early on when I first got out here. And, and, you know, he said very similar things. You know, we, he was taking over a program that, you know, had, had a ways to go. And, um, you know, as far as philosophically going about, you know, how we're turning it around, we're, we're, we haven't tied those talks, but I know that we have a lot of the same beliefs, do it from the ground up, you know, high school players predominantly build it the right way, character, hard work, hustle, togetherness, and the discipline, and, and so uh, it's no surprise, because I've known him for a while since he recruited our daughters, uh, that he's enjoying the success he is. Um, because of who he is and what he stands for. So 
um, it's it's gonna it's gonna be neat to hopefully get there one day ourselves. But we're also uh, we're confident we're gonna get there. But we've also got to remain patient because we know it's gonna take a little time.